How many of you guys, like, you saw yourself in the video? Anybody you saw yourself, you like, you're, that was me, that was me. That was so cool. Like, what an awesome time. I mean, I know we've already cheered because we, like, really enjoyed Spring Retreat. Um, and, and I think we had a lot of fun, but I also know that God did so many cool things, right? And, and that's, like, the big part of Spring Retreat to me. Like, we can have fun at the games during the day. We can have fun at the games after service at night. But, you know, to me, the big part of Spring Retreat is, you know, what's God doing in our lives? And, like, the fact that we get to just show up and meet with him. And so I know that every time that happens, both for me and for for you and for all of our leaders, you know, regardless of age, we've all had some amazing moments at spring retreats, those of us who've been many times. Um, Some of you, how many of you, it was your first spring retreat ever? There we go. There was a few. Nice. Let's give it up for, you guys aren't spring retreat rookies anymore. You guys have been at least once. How many of you were on the red team? Anybody? You're on the red team? Yeah, yeah. Nice. We got some red team leaders in here. Um, Anybody was on the green team? Green team? All right, do we have any, uh, uh, what other colors do we have? Uh, anybody on the blue team? And then, why am I, orange, what was, I, was, I forgot, go Pokes, right? Orange team, yeah. So, hey, hopefully your team won. If they didn't, I'm sorry. There's always next retreat, you know, it is what it is. I will say, if you um, did not get a medal, we do have some extras, all right? I know that Lindsay and Janae were wearing some. It was pretty awesome um, during worship. So we do have some extras in case you didn't get some. There were so many people that signed up like last minute that it got kind of crazy. Um, and we just had to order some more and they didn't come in in time. But it's all right. So with that being said, um, we are going to get some of you guys to come up here and share a little bit just about, you know, spring retreat and what God did in your life this past week. And so the very first person that I need you guys to help me welcome all the way up here would be Miss Faith Caffey. Yeah. Faith, what's up? How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm glad. Uh, what team were you on for retreat? Red. Ooh, any red team members? Yeah, yeah. All right, so Faith, the first thing I need to ask you is, what was your favorite part of spring retreat? Uh, I think my favorite part of retreat was the worship, um, because everybody worships God, and we all love God the same. Yeah. And I really liked the games, because everybody was really friendly. Hey, that's um, good. I mean, we were all aggressive, but, like, still, everybody was apologizing at the end. Sorry for hurting you. Sorry for punching you in the face. (laughs) So everybody was still friendly, Right. but I really liked that part. Love it. That's awesome. Congratulations to you guys. You can play games and still love Jesus, right? That's awesome. All right, so kind of to make it a little more serious, obviously we're talking about maybe things that God did in our lives or that he spoke to us. So what was maybe something for you that you felt like God spoke to you or just like a moment maybe that you had um, that was just really significant that you'd want to share with everybody? Um, I really liked the last night of retreat when Pastor Dakota was talking about we need to use our gifts because God has given them to us. Not only just, it's not about us, it's about him. Because he was, like, saying we use our gifts sometimes and we make them about us and not God. And I really liked how he was saying that because um, it just really spoke to me in a way that God was saying, like, to uplift me for using my gift for him. No, that's super cool. I, yeah, let's clap for that. That's awesome. Here's something that I'll probably start saying a whole lot, and I know that, like, when we talked about this a little bit before, um, my youth pastor told me a whole lot growing up, like in youth ministry, you know, the two things, and he said this actually when he preached a couple weeks ago, shout out Pastor Justin, that, you know, his things he would always ask is, what is God speaking to you and what are you going to do about it? So I think that covers kind of the what's God speaking to you part, right? Yeah. So the second half is like, what's that next step then for you? Like, what do you do if God's calling you to use your gifts to glorify him, then what does that mean? Um, well, God... A couple of weeks ago, um, I was listening to Pastor Ron preach, and then all of a sudden, God just hit me and was like, I want you to play on the worship team. I want you to use your gift and play piano. Um, So I want to pursue that, and so I'm going to play on the worship team. Let's go. That's awesome. And you you came to practice tonight, right? She was like up there shadowing with the worship team. So, so awesome. Everybody give it up for Faith. We love you. Great job. So awesome. And I, again, so many amazing stories just like that. And so we do have a couple more people that we're going to hear from. So next, everybody give it up for my boy, Brayton Bailey. All right, Brayton, 
What team were you on for retreat? Tell everybody. Tell the people. Red. The red team. There's yeah. a theme. There's a theme here. The red team, you know. So did you enjoy your time on the red team? Heck yeah. Heck that yeah. was the greatest thing. <laughs> what about, what did you think about your leaders? Were they pretty cool? Tyler, you're the best. Along with Sheen. Sheen. Well, I can't see Sheen. He's in the booth. But, yeah, hey, the, the lights are bright. The lights are bright. That's our guy. Yeah. So red team, great leaders, right? So what would you say, what was the highlight of your retreat, favorite part? Definitely got to be the gains for okay. the Olympics. There you go. All the Olympics, the okay. Yeah. Did you have like a favorite like station of Olympics or a specific like event? Probably near the, in the football field dealing with the football toss. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wait, so the one it. where like you guys have, like you're at the cones and you yeah, have to like pass yeah, it back and uh -huh. forth that's and then throw it, it through the, yeah. that was like the hardest game we played, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, like, you feel like your team took forever during that game? Did you guys feel like you took forever? We, we took a while, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it was your favorite? Yeah. Just because it was fun or yeah, just, like... Yeah, it was just fun, yeah. Okay, nice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so obviously the games were fun, but, like, any other just, like, highlights, awesome moments? Worshipping, because, yeah. I mean, we were just able to really get into it. I feel like that's what... Sure. That was our best connection with God. Yeah, yeah. So... Obviously, worshiping the services, the messages, we're talking about what God maybe spoke to you or did in your life. So what would you say? Was there some sort of highlight in that way? Going off with what Faith said, uh, definitely what with Dakota's, what he said about uh, using God's gift and giving him credit. Uh, I heard briefly about that on when my parents watched church, and I never really applied it, and now that I'm thinking about it, I've said, oh, it's all skill, I've done it, nothing else, and I'm realizing now that I was all wrong, and I should thank God for this, and tell, help other people to do that. That's awesome. So, everybody give it up for that, that's, that's amazing. I feel like I've, you know, been in very similar shoes as you, you know, how many of you have grown up in church, anybody, you know, I feel like we've all, probably all been there at some point in time, right, because there's the moments where like our moms and dads, they go to church, and they watch church, and they do all those things, but we've got to like make it our own, right, mm -hmm. and so do you have like a specific way maybe in mind that you're going to do that, or just a thought of maybe like what, what's your next step? Probably just, just helping out wherever I can, mm. probably with a uh, Homeless shelters sure. and like John three sixteen, yeah. um, giving even just giving them cards, all the little details, yeah. giving the homeless people, helping out with the church any way I can. Sure. So yeah, that's that's really awesome. Good. That's so cool. I know you you were telling me before like you've kind of helped serve in some ways before and like you've helped mm -hmm. like raise money like for John three sixteen. Like is that definitely something that's on your heart? Is like helping with homeless shelters and things like that? For sure. Uh, so my mom and these probably spent a good total of 100 and we were glad to get 200 back to pay for God. Wow, that's things. awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey, we're super proud of you. Wait, can I say one more thing? Yes, yes. Oh, are you being Ohio was probably the best part of that's it. That's for your treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody give it up for Brayton. You're awesome. We love you. That really was one of, like, the craziest moments of my whole life. We were, like, out there cleaning up after the games, and we all just, like, lost it. And people were running around shouting and stuff because it just, God does miracles, right? Even today, even today. So we're going to watch him do another one on Saturday when they beat Arkansas. It's going to be great. Um, all right, well, we do have one more person who's going to come up and give some testimony of what God did in her life as well. So everybody put your hands together and help me welcome Miss Olivia Lopez. Olivia, hi. Glad you're here. Hi, I'm glad great I'm to, here too. Great to see you. Um, tell everybody what team you were on. I think for the second time in a row, right? Yeah, I've been on the blue team. Hey, Woo! the blue team, a.k.a. the winning team. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't know what it is. Maybe it's you. Like You're just like their lucky charm, possibly. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So, so obviously, aside then from winning, was there a highlight for you? Something about retreat that really just was um, Fun, awesome. I really loved the worship. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was really hype at times, but I also loved how intimate it got, and I felt like no one else was there except for me and God, and I, I wow. loved that so much. Yeah, that's a super cool way to put it, too, just that it's like just you and God. Like, I don't know if anybody else has ever felt that way or you felt that at retreat. A really powerful thing that you just said. Um, so obviously then in those moments, was there – a moment, many moments, or something maybe that the Lord just kind of spoke to you or put on your heart at retreat this year? Oh, yeah. Um, so lately, not being 
the most good Christian, like not reading my Bible as much as I sure. definitely should. Um, but I felt like God spoke to me just like, hey, you got to be in a relationship. A relationship goes two ways because I feel like you're always like, God loves me so much. But hey, you got to love God too. You got to put forth effort. Um, and definitely just reading the Bible and figuring out God's character for myself and not taking people's word for it. Because like I always hear people saying, giving different like things of what God is and who God is as a person. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. There are so many people saying two different things. So I got to find out because read the Bible. That's awesome. So then what would you say maybe is your next step? If God's saying, hey, like come a little bit closer, what does that look like practically? Um, I'd say definitely reading the Bible because sure. it's like um, different stories about how God influenced other people's lives and it's direct, um, like, what's the word? <laughs> it's people telling you what who God is and yeah. what he's done. And I think that's a wonderful way to figure out who God is as a person right. and to definitely just spend time with him and worship by yourself very mm -hmm. intimate because that's how you get to know someone. You yeah. don't get to know someone by what other people tell you about them. You got to talk to them. Yeah, that's super good, actually. Can we, like, everybody clap it up for that? <laughs> Great job. Well, definitely look forward, you know, to all of that. I know God's using you in some awesome ways and also in <laughs> drama and whatnot because you're like in your play and everything. And so we're super yeah. excited about it. Um, but everybody, one more time, let's give it up for Olivia. Totally crushed it. You're awesome. We love you. I know that, you know, there are so many amazing stories and so many amazing stories even at the South Campus that they get to celebrate too. And I, I told our leaders actually before service that, um, that will be like on YouTube, like if you guys want to go watch that, because maybe you have some friends or people that you were on your teams with, um, that, you know, you got to, like maybe you want to hear what they had to say, but obviously we're not all in one place like we were last week. And so we do have one more like kind of moment that we want to like celebrate. So everybody give it up for our girl, Audra Williams. Yeah, yeah. Audra, tell us what team you are on. Green team. The green team, yeah. I feel like, are there like two green team members in here? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan's like, proud dad, yeah. So, all right, Audra, um, what was your highlight of retreat, your most favorite part? Um, I got to say the worship. The worship. I, worshiping was very emotional, but at the mm. same time, I loved it. Yeah. It really spoke to me. I thought it was really fun, that's awesome. too. I feel like that's a recurring theme, is that the worship <laughs> was like everybody's favorite part. So, again, shout out to the team. You guys, are, you guys are great. So, okay, so you said that it, like, really spoke to you. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, what specifically spoke? Like, what did God speak to you? Well, um, not going to lie, the last um, time we were here, like, the last day, um, what we were talking about really spoke to me when he said that, um, uh, um, when he said that you, you should use your gift for, other thing you should use it you shouldn't use it for other things you should usually usually use it for God yeah. it's fine to use it for other things but I think you should use it for God because yeah. he's the one that gave you that gift right. it wasn't it's not your gift it's actually his yeah. and if you're not going to show it to God and show that it's yours mm -hmm. then well I mean you should like it's his it's yeah. you're the one that he's the one that gave it to you right. then you should show him off too so what does that mean then? Like what, what, what are you going to do with your gift? Well, I've always been passionate about singing, and I've always wanted to join the worship team, so I thought about trying out for the worship team. Hey, come on. That means you could be up there leading us in worship next spring retreat. <gasps> That's crazy. Well, hey, we're super proud of you. You're awesome. Everybody give it up one more time for Audra. I, I hope, you know, many of you probably, you'd say similar things, you know, that I really felt like every message Pastor Dakota preached was just like right on for all of us, you know, because um, I know there have been moments where maybe I've wandered a little bit from, from Jesus because I wasn't intentionally staying close, right? There have been other moments where like I know that I'm called to do something and I know that he's calling me, but maybe I don't feel worthy, maybe I don't feel good enough, maybe I don't feel like I am equipped to do all that he's called me to do, you know, but really... Jesus is enough. Even just like our theme for retreat was that he's all we need, right? And so really our answer then is pending. And so to step into that, for so many of you to come up here tonight and say, God's given me this gift and I want to use it for his glory, which is what Pastor Dakota talked about the third night. Like how awesome is that? And 
honestly, there's so many other stories even too. Like I, we, you know, you got some of you guys filled out these cards. Anybody fill one of these out? Like while you were at retreat? Awesome. I see your hands. Great. There were a few actually that really kind of stuck out to me. Some even that I just wanted to share. Um, just tonight even as well. Somebody, uh, when we asked what God was doing in their lives, said that, you know, God led me to the to Assembly Youth, and I love it here, um, and I don't know what he's going to do next, but they're super excited for it. And so then when it says, what do you really need? It says, I don't know, dot, 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 yet, because they're just anticipating the future, right, like of what God's going to do. Um, I really like this one just because it's kind of funny. What do you really need? And they just put IDK, sorry. <laughs> Because <laughs> they didn't really, you know, maybe there wasn't anything specific. Um, someone wrote, you know, what is God doing in your life? And said, I believe that God wants me to serve the church. Um, I was seven when I first went to church. And ever since, you know, good things have happened in my life to bring me here today. And so what do you really need? Really, um, a leader to turn me to the right direction to be closer to God and to serve the church and to be a leader to others. And so how, how cool of a thing to say, like, I want to step up and be a leader, Right. And so all the leaders that are in the room, shout out to you guys, because like that's you coming alongside. You know, I know we shouted out Tyler and Sheen, but hey, give it up for the leaders. You guys are amazing. Thank you for being here every week, you know, and sacrificing, even all the sacrifices um, that you made to be at retreat. You know, some of you took off work. Some of you, you know, you showed up early and you stayed late and you lost some sleep. And so hopefully you guys have gotten to take some naps. Um, there definitely are some, you know, some people got like kind of deep. There were Students that talked about addictions and things like that they've been struggling with that the Lord set them free from. Things that, um, you know, just choices that they've been making that they know they shouldn't. And so, like, they're going to commit to walk that out. And they, they're trying to find people to help them to walk that out. I really like this one. When asked, um, what do you really need? Someone wrote, uh, or uh, what I really need is a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Because sometimes I can look toward moments of, you know, doubt and say, you know, this is why I do it. And I think for all of us, that's a, a pretty powerful thing, right? Like, to be able to say, hey, this is why I do what I do, and, and I need, you know, this reason to get out of the bed in the morning, and, and we talked a lot about purpose, and we talked a lot about identity, and I know that, you know, God has called you all to amazing things, and I know we say that a lot too, but I hope that you hear that as more than just like a cliche thing that we say because it's church and, and, and all that, but you really understand after this retreat that God's calling you to some awesome things, and you know, everybody that's out there, really, we could probably all come up here and take the next, like, two, three hours, however long, and I could ask every one of you, what was the highlight, what's God speaking to you, and what are you going to do about it? And you'd probably all be able to say something, right? God spoke to all of us in, in some way, shape, or form. Even, you know, today I was reminded in Summit Chapel that, you know, for all of us maybe who weren't at retreat, maybe you're listening to some of this and you're like, man, like I wasn't there, but I can't wait till next year because it just seems so amazing. God does speak to us and all that. And so today in chapel, Pastor David was saying that, you know, God doesn't have a speaking problem. He's always speaking. Sometimes we just have a listening problem, right? We're not always there, like ready to listen. And, and there's so many other things maybe that distract us from what he's trying to say. But when we really can commit, that's what's so cool about retreat is we kind of can get away from everything else in life for a couple days and just focus in on what God's saying, right? And, and in those moments, it's amazing how much God shows up and how powerful that those moments can be. I know for me, like as a student, um, I showed some students this on Friday. This is like a little apple. It's, it's fake, obviously. It's from my 10th grade spring retreat. Do you have any like sophomores in here? Maybe, maybe not. Any? Hey, Nick, shout out to Nick, yeah. So this is from my 10th grade spring retreat, and they gave this to us because kind of part of the theme that year was like bearing fruit and whatnot. And, you know, they gave me a Sharpie even, and we were supposed to write something down on here that the Lord kind of had spoken to us. And so I wrote on this that I'm a leader, and now I need to live like one. And I've kept this, like obviously ever since, like even until now, um, in part because it reminds me of those moments of what God spoke to me. And so every time maybe I need encouragement or I just need a reminder maybe of my purpose and what God's called me to, I can read that and just be reminded that, you know, however many years ago I was in 10th grade that God spoke to me, you know, and I had that moment just like many of you did this past week. And, you know, I have up here in this little bowl like a whole bunch of like seeds. I don't know that you guys can see these. They're, oops, that one fell. Um, they're real small. Can you guys see this? I think this one specifically is a sunflower seed. Some of you are like, man, I'm so hungry I could eat that right now, you know. And, and others of you are like, oh, man, I would love to go and, like, plant this. And these are up here if you guys, like, want to take one with you, like, after service or whatever. But, but they're up here because we really wanted to make a point tonight that, you know, God has planted some seeds in our hearts. You 
know, he's spoken some things to us. He's putting some sort of thing inside of you, like stirred up some passion, you know, made you realize that, hey, I have this gift and, and now I need to use it for God's glory. But if we just took this seed and we left it in this bowl, what good does it do? It doesn't do any good, right? Honestly, it'll probably like rot and become gross and nasty and no one will ever, we'll have to throw it out. It'll be horrible. But if we take it, if we take this sunflower seed, there's a whole bunch of kinds. I don't even know what some of these are. This one looks like, I don't know, it looks like a small little circle. If we take this, I could go home and plant this right now and I could water it, you know, and do all the things that you do. I, I'm obviously not the person to ask about how to like grow stuff, but like I could do all those things, photosynthesis, you know, and like it could grow into some plant and it'd be a surprise because I don't know what kind of seed that is. Sunflower seed, plant it, water it, sunshine. And after a certain amount of time, just of me being faithful with that and cultivating that seed, you know, in that process and, and helping it grow into a plant, one day that would become a sunflower, right? And so here's kind of the point we want to make tonight is just that what God did at Spring Retreat is right here. But if we cultivate that, if we continue maybe just to take that next step that he's calling us to, and once we've taken that step, to take the next step that he's calling us to, to keep on listening for his voice, because here's, here's you know, reality check. God speaks to all of us, right? Not just at spring retreat. We don't have to wait till next March to hear God speak to us again. God speaks to us any moment that we're willing to listen. So even right now, if you're like, man, I really need a word from God, just shut it all down, be real quiet, and just ask, you know, God, what do you want to speak to me? Because maybe there's a seed right here that, again, we just need to plant that, cultivate it, take that next step, take that next step, and who knows what that could grow into. And, and it's going to be amazing to see as you guys continue just to, to walk that out. I remember being, you know, a seventh grader at my very first retreat, being shy, like in our small group times, you know, not wanting to talk because I didn't feel like I had much to offer, and there were like all these kids that were older than me, and so it was kind of intimidating. I remember feeling like, wow, I, I would so much rather go and play these games than sit in these services that seem way too long. <laughs> the worship's really fun, but like the, it lasts forever, you know? And so like, like, can we just go play some more games, you know? But as I continued to grow and as, as God continued, you know, to cultivate seeds, as leaders began to continue, you know, to help me grow, like fruit started to, to show up in my life. And obviously now here I am all those years later. And so my question is like, where might you be 10 years from now? Because for some of you, maybe you might be up here. Pre you could be the next youth pastor here at Edison Youth. Who knows? I don't know that like any of my youth pastors would have said that when I was your age. Maybe they would have. Maybe, you know, you'll be a leader. Maybe you'll be a teacher. Maybe you'll be a doctor. Maybe you'll be a musician. You'll be up on stage. Here's the part that's crazy about that is Lindsay went to retreat as a student. Jack went to retreat as a student. I know Sam and Nick, you guys were old enough to go. I don't know that you did though. Missed opportunity. Janae went to retreat as a student literally just last year. Destiny went to retreat. You're awesome. Colton went to retreat. Michaela went to retreat. There's so many leaders that are now here in this room and they serve at retreat, not just because it's super fun, but because it's changed their lives. And so what's super cool about that is now we just all get to walk that out together, right? In my breakout session at retreat, um, for those of you that were there, we talked about Luke chapter eight, how there's this man who's possessed by many demons. It's crazy. He's like the worst situation literally ever. And Jesus shows up. And we talked about how the presence of Jesus, when it shows up, he's so powerful that like these demons, they were like cast out. And the whole situation flips upside down. And this guy who was naked, who was crazy, who everything in his life was just going so wrong, in an instant changed, in the next moment we see him seated at the feet of Jesus, fully clothed and fully sane. And it's an awesome, beautiful picture. And maybe, you know, you left the breakout, kind of like I did, asking what happens after that, right? What, what happens to that guy after that? And so I wanna read right here, Luke chapter eight, verses 37 and 39 real fast, where it says, and all the people in the region of the Gerasenes begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone for a great wave of fear swept over them. This whole situation was so crazy. They were like, Jesus, could you leave? <laughs> I think that's really funny. And so anyways, it says Jesus returns to the boat, right? He, he He's gonna cross back across to the other side of the lake. And this is where that man comes back in. And it says the man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him home saying, no, Go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. And so he went all through the town proclaiming the great things that Jesus had done for him. And for many of us, we might honestly sit here and say, man, I wish we could go to Spring Retreat again tonight. 
Man, I wish that Spring Retreat could happen every weekend. I wish Spring Retreat could happen every day because God showed up and it was this powerful moment. We had like this real cool runway stage bump out thing that was awesome. And so like, you know, it just, it was, it felt so awesome. It was amazing. But here's what I know is, you know, we can't always just have those moments. Jesus is saying, no, you need to go and tell everybody about what I've done in your life and tell everybody about, you know, what I, what, what's been on your heart. Because maybe, you know, for all of us, that next step, maybe it is joining the worship team. Maybe it is auditioning for the worship team. Maybe it is like serving at some homeless shelters or whatever that looks like. But really the thing for all of us is to go and tell people about what God's done in our lives. And what's super cool about that is as we do that, we're planting seeds in other people's lives. And, and we get to just see how God uses that and how maybe they come to know him. And maybe next year they'll be at Spring Retreat because we told them how powerful Spring Retreat was for us this year. And so it's this ongoing thing that we all get to walk out together. But I really do believe that if we just keep taking that next step and keep taking that next step, we keep listening to what God is saying to us and then we keep putting it into action. What's God speaking to you? What's, what are you gonna do about it? That when we do that, all the, all the you know, the, What's really cool to me about Spring Retreat is we got to combine with the South Campus. And man, this place was packed, right? It was awesome. Like there's so many people, like it could feel like that every Wednesday because we reach all of our friends that we go to school with, all of our friends that we play sports with, all of our friends that we're in drama with, all of our friends, you know, and not just for the sake of getting them here, but because Jesus wants to do something in their lives too. And so here's what I wanna do, you know, a, a very churchy term for what I just described would be revival. We want to see people come to know Jesus. That's revival. You know, they were spiritually dead and now they're coming to life. We want to see God maybe revive some dreams in their hearts and, and maybe even in ours. And so tonight we're going to sing this song, Lord Send Revival. And here's what I'd like for all of you guys to do. If you want to just stand up and, and you can actually come down to the front if you'd like to. And we're going to sing this song. And I just want you guys, you know, to worship and, and maybe pray. Just maybe have that moment like we talked about a little bit earlier, you know, where you just kind of like Olivia said, where you kind of get alone with God. It's just you and him, right? Have that conversation with him. Ask him what that next step is. Maybe you need to hear his voice tonight. Listen for what that, what, what listen to what he's saying to you because he, he'll speak if you're, if you're willing to listen. And so let's declare this because this really is the cry of our hearts. This is our mission to go and to put what God has done in our lives into action.